Welcome and thank you for purchasing the e-commerce tracker spreadsheet. This video is going to give you a brief overview of the spreadsheet and let you know what's available on it. There will be additional videos that will go more in depth on each tab. So let's get started. The workbook is pretty simple and I just want to say for any of you who do not know what a spreadsheet is or how it works, you have rows which are basically horizontal as you see here as in row three and you also have columns like row or column C. So when you hear me say row or column, that's what I mean. On this first page, which is entitled Profit Summaries, you see down here below, we have the year 2017 divided up by month. And you can collapse this by clicking this little plus or minus up here at the top of each column. You can see one of these for each year. So that way you can have it sort of collapsed and you don't have to see all of them at once. So let's open 2017 back up and we'll briefly go over what these are. The sales summary lets you have up to 10 different e-commerce platforms that you can track the sales for. So you see here I have some examples, eBay, Amazon, Craigslist, and so on. Shipping revenue is just that, revenue for the platforms you listed below. And then there's a gross total here. The next section is cost of goods sold, which is basically the price you paid for the items that you did in fact sell. The shipping expense broken out by platform, the platform fees also broken out by platform, and then just other costs you may have in terms of running your business. Your total expenses are down here, followed by your net profit number right here. And this column over here, column P, sums up the entire year and keeps a running total as you go. Down below, you also see three rows for inventory. This allows you to enter inventory items and what you paid for them, see how many you've bought for the year or a month, and what your average sourcing cost was. So a lot of functionality there. Next up is Items Summary. This is a formulated page just like the preceding page of Profit Summary. You do not need to enter anything in a formulated area of the spreadsheet. It's automatically pulling that info from somewhere else. If you enter something, you will delete the formula that's there and the spreadsheet will not work the way it's designed to work. So this sheet is also formulated and gives you a further breakdown based on your monthly totals in terms of your items sold, sold per day, your totals, with a balancing feature down here below, as well as your net profit percentage and net per item, as well as your sell to list ratio, which shows you how many items you sold versus how many you've listed. So pretty cool. And this goes by year as well. Here's 18, 19, and so on. Next up is the charts tab. This tab allows you by year, and you can see here in the drop down, to select a year and see how your sales are in terms of gross sales by the month graphically. This is a line graph, and down here you see a pie chart. And you can see when I hover over each one, it shows you the total dollars as well as the percentage of sales that is for your business. So in this example, it's 65 total dollars, so 27% of our total sales were by eBay. As you add e-commerce platforms, these will fill in automatically. You don't need to do anything on this page. It's formulated. There's nothing you need to add here. It just pulls us in from other areas. Next up is the Sales tab. Now, a lot of this is formulated, but some of it is manual as well. This is where you'll actually enter your sales. We'll talk more about this in a future video and more in depth. But basically, it's broken up into columns. You will enter your sales results. Some of the information will automatically populate from your inventory tab. And it will figure things such as your net profit per item. This does not take into account any fees or taxes or anything like that. It's just the basic selling price, shipping revenue, as well as the shipping cost and the cost of goods you paid for the item. So pretty cool, very simple to do. And like I said, we'll get more in depth on that in a future video. The next tab is the inventory tab. Now this tab is where you will spend a lot of time in your spreadsheet because this is where you will actually enter what you've bought. We will talk about this in depth, but know that there are various columns for various types of information you may want to track. A lot of this is SKU driven. A SKU stands for a stock keeping unit. It just means a way for you to identify any one particular item versus all your other items. It's something that's unique to just that item. It's a great way to track things in a spreadsheet. There's also three user-defined columns over here. If you want to track your own information, you can put a title in here and track whatever it is you would like to track. Maybe you want to do 
some sort of category or something else on particular items. You're free to do that. You can put whatever you need to in those columns. And this particular form you see here is for Windows users only. It allows you to enter inventory items by a form. It basically does the same thing as you would do if you went in here and entered these individually, but this allows you to do it in a form. So it just looks a little neater graphically. Unfortunately, it's not available for Mac users, but if you're a Windows user and you follow these instructions above, you will be able to create this form for every single item that you enter into your inventory and get it onto the sheet. Next up is expenses. You can record any kind of expense you have to your business, your selling expenses for eBay, your PayPal, Amazon, what have you. It's broken out by date. There's a formulated column here for the month. There's um, columns here for a selection type of expense. We'll get into that in a little bit later. As well as some manual tracking here you'll need. Um, and again, we will do more about this particular tab in a future video, so stay tuned for that. Locations is where you will actually keep your stock. So you'll be able to select different stock locations based on your inventory needs. You can literally create any type of stock location you like. It could be a letter, it could be a series of letters, it could be a number, it could be a series of numbers, it can be letters and numbers. It could be colors, it could be a room in your house. Wh whatever you wanna put here, you'll be able to do and you'll be able to create the number of spots available and it will keep track of how many are open and that will actually tie it back into your inventory page so you will always know if you have spots open in a given inventory location. Again, we'll do a little bit more about this particular tab in a future video. Last up is control. This is where we will actually set the parameters for some of the other sheets in this spreadsheet. Things like our expenses, when we started selling, and you can, you can set that for a different date if you like, depending on when you started the platform you're selling on, your fees and locations of your stock. Again, this will be covered in more depth with a future video, but I just wanted to make you aware of it. So those are the basic tabs of the spreadsheet. And I've got a few things I just wanna tell you in general about the workbook. First of all, you can move these tabs down here anywhere you want. Say you want inventory to be before sales. You can click it and hold it and drag it. And that's no problem. However, if you start trying to move columns or rows to somewhere else in the spreadsheet, whether on the same tab or somewhere else, the spreadsheet may not function properly. A lot of these formulas are looking for things in certain places, and when you move them, it will not be able to find them and you may get errors. I would say if you, if you wanna do that, when you first get this workbook, I highly recommend you save a blank copy separately, and then, as you're, as you're doing your work in this workbook, in this spreadsheet, save it in at least one other place in case you make a mistake. You should be saving your work often anyway. And if you wanna move columns or rows in a workbook, create a test copy. Just create an identical copy of your workbook. Go ahead and play around with, with to whatever degree you want and, and make sure that it's working properly before you make those changes wholesale in your original master copy. Always a good best practice. So if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below, below this video, and I will see them and answer them here, or another user may answer them as well. But it's important you do that so that other people can see the response as well as the question, because they may have the same question. Chances are they're, they do, and it'll make it a lot simpler for everybody to learn how to use this a lot more efficiently. So thank you so much for purchasing the tracker. I hope you enjoy as much as I enjoy creating it. And be sure to check out the other videos in this playlist for detailed instructions on each tab. See you soon.